Okay, I'm coming into the end of today's class with this video. And the goal was to get all the line work done in today's class. But the most important thing is I have the approach and I know what needs to be done. And so I'm going to put in kind of the major structures that I can. And then at the beginning of next class, when I come back to this and get this ready for coloring, what I'll do is take some of the textures I've built and copy those onto new layers and kind of transform them in and almost composite the vector shapes where I need them. But first I need to establish some of these new patterns and especially these longer feathers, these more linear elements to the design. So I want to get the edges of those and then I can fill in with the texture. Now there's a silver lining to using a technique as an illustrator that's really labor intensive. And that silver lining is when, in, when anyone wants to copy your technique, they also have to do a whole lot of work which means that you're less likely to be um, stolen from, right? Your work is less prone to being adapted or derived if just to get that look requires a high level of kind of technical commitment. So I often kind of think of that with my finished work. I want it to look good but I also want it to be difficult to copy. And ideally, even though it takes a long time, it suits my own interests, right? So I'm more likely to be willing to spend the time doing it than someone else who's just trying to copy the look. Now I say that at the same time as trying to copy the look of his historical pieces and different woodblock prints or etchings of the reference that I'm using, right? So sometimes you don't know how much work something is until you try to copy it or make it yourself. And that's why I'm a big fan of art history and a big fan of trying out new techniques and trying to match other styles, especially older styles with different tools. So don't be afraid of the work. I should have predicted it, but my, my biggest problem with teaching my own children to draw and to, to make good, good projects, because they have great ideas, is that the younger you are, it seems, at least at the ages they are, which is 9 and 12, it's really hard to get them to spend more than one sitting on any one project. Right? And you just simply can't do good art <laughs> without putting in a lot of time. And even though people think digital art is so fast, you can see there's no shortcuts to some things. That said, once I get some of these new textures in for the feathers, I'll try to show you what shortcuts necessity might dictate at the beginning of next class. But if it were my own job, you know, and I was working on a deadline, I would just work on this as long as I could stand it. <laughs> you know? I wouldn't be looking for shortcuts. And when I compare this to my fine artwork, which can take me, you know, three or four months to do, this isn't a commitment of time at all. So it's all relative. I know a lot of you are taking drawing or have taken drawing or taking painting or have taken painting. Uh, those projects, just because of their size and materials, require a lot of time.
So it's okay to expect a lot from a digital art piece too. That's why so many of the, uh, the videos that we like of digital artists showing us how they do their work are sped up like five or eight times. <laughs> Because watching them do it in real time, like I do with these videos, can get really repetitive and boring. Now, this is actually very, very similar to the digital painting we'll be doing later, except in with digital painting, I'll be varying the colors with each stroke, right? And I'll be using a customized brush which will give me a little bit more personality with each stroke than just this blob brush gives me. But if you look at the art historical record, especially of naturalist work, of woodcuts, of trees, of animals, you'll see all of this kind of meticulous texturing in the line work because it's where you could get the most expressive uh, communication to come through because the coloring was usually added later by watercolor by hand. And so it was only the black line work that was really clean and controlled by the original artist. So you'll have these, you know, prints of oak trees where you just have every, um, part of the bark, every little line and texture, every squarish shape outlined and then filled in with cross contour. And it takes a lot of meticulous work, but it's just beautiful. And that's what I'm trying to reference here. And unlike doing a, a woodblock print where you're hoping that the wood holds up and that the printing is good enough that it carries all of your detail through. As a vector, I know every, every stroke I make is like a cut out of a piece of paper. It's just perfectly clean on all edges and preserved. Maximizing its versatility and its usefulness. Time to save because my computer is beginning to have a little bit of trouble keeping up with me. Time to close other programs I don't need to open. And now I want to create some of these linear hatching patterns on these long tail feathers that I might be able to use other places. I'm going to first build with a slightly thicker stroke. Curve it at the end. I'm going to define that cast shadow a little bit of one feather on top of the other. And then switch to the smaller. So I'm going between seven and four. And then build cross contour over it. So a little bit of cross hatching here. But longer strokes as well. Thank <laughs> you. 
See how that's working? Yeah, it's going to work well. And I need to get a sense of this tail kind of all fanning out from the same place. And that can be tricky. So one thing is that you can actually use the print tilting tool. Uh, where is it? I don't know. I lost my place. Here we go. So if I take the artboard and I extend it, with this print tilting tool, ah, I can see white all the way around it. So I can create my own artboard. And that can help when I turn it off, so I don't have to look through the gray anymore. I have multiple artboards going, and so I can uh, shift click to select alt alt multiple artboards. And sometimes you have to turn off your sketch in order to decide what's best. So. For my tail, I'm going to increase the angle a little bit of it so it feels like they're all fanning out to the same place. Again, you don't need to be a slave to your sketch. What we want are these clean vectors at the end. See how that looks. Yeah, so that, that tail's looking more believable, and I'm gonna use the eraser, cut off that excess. Okay, now just to finish up in my last minute, I'm gonna to go to a slightly thicker line. Let's try six. And you can type it in if it's giving you trouble. And I just want to finish my outline. I remember I wanted that connected outline all the way through. That will help with color. And this is the blob brush with all accuracy going all towards accuracy, no um, smoothness. And it's just like an ink brush, catching every little bump and wobble in my hand. 